attendance, the Milford Daily News and the Town Crier. If anybody would like a copy of tonight's meeting, please let any school committee member know at the end of the meeting. Welcome everybody. First agenda item is approval of the minutes. Has every member had an opportunity to read the minutes? Any discussion? May I have a motion from Scott? Second from Joe? All in favor? Okay, next agenda item is announcements, correspondence, and distributions. Any member? Scott? Mr. Chairman, um, a couple things. One, wanted to recognize the, uh, the Milford Public Schools Jazz Band for their concert <coughs> that they put on the week leading up to vacation. Um, did, had an opportunity to attend that. They did a phenomenal job um, under the direction of uh, Nadine, Nadine Pomeroy as well as um, Jason Samiago. It's always impressive to watch these musicians, um, even at a young age, and the talent and the, and the show, showmanship that they're able to put forth. Um, they went really from grade six all the way up through the high school. Um, and they all ended up coming together and playing together at the end. So it's great to hear the different grades and then see the collaboration of all the different musicians. And really just, as always, the incredible talent that we have of our musicians here in Milford. So I want to make sure I recognize those. Uh, second piece, um, <coughs> and I'll also bring this back up again on our future agenda items. Um, you know, want to congratulate Meg Belsito, our uh, special ed director, on her new position with a heavy heart. Uh, she'll be leaving us. And certainly congratulations to her and her future endeavors. Um, and then uh, I look forward to seeing how our, you know, what our search process will be look, looking like, as that is under, obviously, the responsibility of the school committee. Uh, but I'll review that again under future agenda items. Thank you very much. Jen? I had a chance to talk with Nancy Angelini at Stacy Middle School today, and she noted that there's an upcoming um, program, both for students and parents, on the topic of social media safety. That's coming up on May 26th. Um, each grade level will be met with individually, and there'll be a forum for parents at 7 p.m. on May 26th. So it's a very timely topic, and it's great that the middle school is supporting that for our families and students. Any other member? Joe? Um, I just want to congratulate the students that were newly inducted and the seniors for the National Art Society that some of us <coughs> all attended. These kids are amazing. Some of their artwork is is outstanding. Plus, my son was there too. So, <laughs> <laughs> go, Kevin. Um, no, these kids they, they do a great job, and they they always always outshine when they do stuff. So, I just want to congratulate those kids. Joe, I just want to say that uh, Craig did a great job at the uh, Woodland dinner last night. Um, so, <laughs> phenomenal job there. Um, did a great job emceeing, and um, also the, uh, the kids did a fantastic job last night at the cultural event at Stacy. Any other member? Kevin? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just want to um, share um, an upcoming opportunity that we have here in Milford. I'm actually going to read the description. Um, the, the name of the presentation, we're going we're gonna to hold an official screening of a film called If Only. It's a short, powerful film presented by the Mark Wahlberg Youth Foundation and Millennium Health in conjunction with Recovery Centers of America. The film is intended for teens, parents, and adults to increase awareness about the dangers of prescription drug misuse and abuse. The film, along with the panel discussion to follow, provides an opportunity to continue the conversation about drugs and substance abuse prevention within our community. If Only was shown recently at the Juvenile Advocacy Group Breakfast held in Milford, where Superintendent Tremblay was in attendance. Dr. Tremblay was so inspired by the film that he committed to bring Mr. Wahlberg in the film to Milford High School to be shown to the students, their families, and the adults in the Milford community. If Only will be screened on May 12th during the day to all Milford High School students. The community screening will be at 7 p.m. on May 12th, um, 2016 in the Milford High School Auditorium. <coughs> Please save this date. Um, I had also had an opportunity to see the film, and it's it's very powerful, um, and I think it's a it it sends a great message of how these types of issues affect all all families, all communities, and we thought it would be a great uh, discussion to engage in here in Milford. Thank you. Just another example of all the great things that go on in the Milford Public Schools. We're very fortunate. Okay, next agenda item is invitation to speak. Anybody here to speak? Okay, next agenda item is recognition of the United Way of Tri-County Volunteer of the Year Award. Sydney? Jen? <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to run the ejector? I think Jim's got it. You got it, Jimmy? Yep. Okay. Sydney, if you want to come up just to the microphone so that we can... <laughs> 
We can hear you, no problem. <laughs> <That's fair. laughs> it's the viewing public that are not able My to. My name is Julia Kidman. I volunteer with JAG at Homeless Abuse for Girl Scouts. I am doing a civil ward, and I'm making a like mini library almost for the New Year's Center. They want these to be for all types of kids, and I know some kids would rather read books than play video games or play sports in, in the gym. Well, Julia is always coming out, you know, coming on her own. Uh, she's always bringing more kids to be involved in the youth center, uh, more kids to be involved in JAG. Uh, and like I said, she just, you know, she's a go-getter. With almost everything I do, or I don't do that I heard of, like my family does, pretty much tell all my friends about it, stop talking about it. And like with the um, the library, like I'll probably have like a sign that says I did it for my silver award. And so like people will know about it and they'll be like, hmm, that's cool, maybe I should try to do something like that. I think the major thing that Julia brings to the table to get other youth involved is just her infectious personality. She's always so positive and regardless of the situations that she's had to encounter growing up, she doesn't let that hold her back and she's just so giving to other people and wants to do good in the community. It shows that not every, like, that people care about the place that they live and who they are and, and they want to do good for them. If you guys don't mind, why don't you guys come on up? You should be sitting here, Julia, not me. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is Julia, everybody, and um, Julia's an amazing little young girl, and she does a lot of good things for the Milford Youth Center, and we're very proud of her. Hi. 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 <laughs> Julia, tell us about it. Can you tell us about your project? Maybe a, give for us a few more Silver details. Yeah. Project? yeah. So it's like, like the second big project in Girl Scouts and what I'm doing for it is like you're supposed to do something like bigger in your town and like have it affect like more later on in life and so like I know the youth center will be on more often also because it's going to be new and so if you put a library in there that will sustain for a long time. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. Scott? Um, so first off, thank you for coming and and, uh, and and talking with us. Certainly, congratulations. It sounds like uh, you put a lot of effort into this. So a couple of questions I have for you, if that's OK. Um, so where did you come up with the idea? Um, in one of my meetings, for when we were planning like what each of our groups for our civil projects, um, one of my friends gave me an idea of it because I knew I wanted to do something with the youth center. I just had no idea what to do, so Chapman gave me the idea. Okay. Then I like made it to my own. Okay, and that's great. And um, so, are you collecting books for this? And can you tell us a little bit about the project? You're collecting books. Where's it? Where's it going to be? And, and is it as it moves over into the new into the new space, right? I um, actually still need, still need it to get approved by the. Girl Scouts of Western County, whatever it was called. Um, like, them people need to prove it. But I am going to collect books. I like make a box and put it either like in the library, like the town library, or like one of some of the middle schools, because usually middle schools go to the center. So I have like middle school books there. Okay. So I have, a, I, have a, I, have a, I have an ask of you, if that's okay. So when you get your distribution boxes and you're starting to collect books, would you come and let us know and we'll make sure that we talk about it at our meeting and that we'll make sure that we give some press to it so we can help you with getting some extra books? Okay. Does that sound good? Yeah. Excellent. Congratulations. Thank We're you. very proud of you. Okay. Any other members? I just have a Jen? question. Have you had a chance to go into the new youth center yet and see the changes? No, I haven't. They haven't let you in yet? I'm waiting to go in. Where are you, what are you most looking forward to over there? Um, Besides your library, of course. All of it, I guess, because it's going to be really cool. Great. She will be able to go in next Wednesday. So okay. Julie is a part of our JAG Youth Council. Okay. So it's our leadership group, well, and sure. they're the group Great. that sure. go out in the community. They participate in the Relay for Life and all okay. of our community events and help with our Thanksgiving dinners and Christmas parties. They're the group that we always go to that always help out with everything we do. Okay. So as a special 
kind yeah. of um, gift to them before the grand opening. They're having their leadership because they haven't stopped having that since we've been in transition. So they're going to come on Wednesday before the grand opening and get to tour it beforehand. So well, congratulations, mm -hmm. great job. Joe, yeah, so you're, you're clearly a great leader and a, a positive role model for all the other kids in the in the community. Um, so th th thank you for that and. Uh, as you guys mentioned, the Youth Center is going to be this, this great facility that's going to offer so much to our, our, our kids. So um, keep attracting those kids to the Youth Center and, and helping to grow some of the programs there. You're doing a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, congratulations to you. You know, as everybody knows, the Youth Center is dear and very dear to my heart. And with Sydney and Jen and the committee, we had a big hand in getting it renovated. So I'm as excited as you are, though I have to admit I've been in it. <laughs> and it's over the top it's over the top so but it's just another example of a fine young lady like yourself and the program you know that you're working on that goes on every single day in the Milford Youth Center and there's a lot of great programs and it's a credit to Jen and Sydney who take the time to work with these children every single day we're very very fortunate to have you so congratulations and thank you very very much thank take you. care Yeah, there's a second tab. All the way at the top. Yeah. Oh, it's on the, I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. On the tab. <laughs> Hi, my name is John DeLude. I've been a volunteer at the Milford Youth Center for three years now. And I enjoy every minute of it. Um, I like the kids. I enjoy the kids. And basically, uh, I like to keep busy. There seems to be a lot of projects around the youth center. When John first started, it was a, it was a little bit awkward for him just because he didn't really know the kids. And um, so we tried to find a way where he can get involved. So we started the volleyball game and he was a part of it. And um, the, the, other, the other team served the ball and he literally dove for that ball and got the ball. And from there on, the kids loved it. He just became one of the kids. <laughs> I've got to work on my volleyball skills. <laughs> it had been a while. He's the first one to, to play a game with a kid that's not playing with somebody or to help with a project that the staff needs. So I think his, just, uh, his effect on the community and the, and the kids is just is opening up that kind of stigma that you know, we can't be connected to, these, to the people that are different than us. I'm flattered. Uh, I, I don't think I really deserve it, but I do appreciate it. Uh, uh, it makes me feel that uh, I'm doing a worthwhile thing. John, you want to come up to the table, please? Sydney, just hand John a mic. I'm a little older than Julia. <laughs> <laughs> I do enjoy the kids. Show you how old I am. I think you are Cub Scout. I'm just in my 20s. Though, so. <laughs> you know, I, I kind of miss that. And uh, this gives me an opportunity to, to be with the kids. It's a great place. Um, I haven't seen the finished uh, gym yet. Uh, Jen gave me a tour about a month and a half ago, but uh, it's going to be great. <laughs> it's going to be great. A lot better than our, 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 uh, our current uh, <laughs> location. <laughs> any member? Have any? I just, congratulations. Yeah. I mean, to put that, you know, spare time in the children at the center, it's, it's great. I, I, I enjoy it. It's a joy. It really is. Yeah, it, I'll 
I'll second that. Congratulations on the award. You know, I would say at the youth center, they need all the help they can get. Uh, so it's, it's, it's fantastic that you're there volunteering. And I love the fact that I'd love to see more seniors get involved at the youth center and interacting with some of the kids because there's so much that they can learn from, from you and your generation, and it's, it's, it's wonderful. I just want to say thank you to both of you as well. I, I think it, the, the participation is fantastic. You know, hopefully more people um, follow suit and, you know, that contingency gets bigger. So thank you and congratulations. As a uh, member of the Youth Commission, I also want to say thank you. And what people lose sight of is the importance of having people like this gentleman there is that <laughs> In the after school program, there are times when you'll go into that building and there'll be some children that are just sitting, just trying to figure things out, what life is throwing them, the curveball, whatever it is. And to have volunteers like this gentleman there to help them through that, just to answer, could be as simple just answering a question. Because as you said, you, you know, you've been around and, and the kids just sometimes just need Sydney, Jen, someone to talk to just to get through the day. So I personally just want to say thank you very much for the time you've given us over three years, and Sydney and Jen have told me a lot about you. So thank you, and hopefully you'll stay with us in the new building. Oh, definitely. Well, thank you. Thank You're you very welcome. much. <laughs> thank you. You're good. Thank you. You're good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you, Jen. Mm -hmm. thank you. <laughs> okay, next agenda item is the Milford High School Liaison to the School Committee. One right up. Uh-oh, she's going to book. <laughs> Lots going on. <laughs> okay. As most of you know, um, the National Art Honor Society's gallery show and induction just wrapped up. And it was a big success. Um, it was a great platform for students such as myself to show off work completed throughout the year. Um, seniors were celebrated and given chords. New members were inducted. And even a local artist came to speak. Um, on Thursday, May 12th, there will be two one-hour presentations for students on the opiate addiction crisis. Jim Wahlberg's film, If Only, will be shown by, followed by a presentation by Mr. Wahlberg and a panel discussion. SAD students are working with Dr. Tremblay and the <coughs> district wellness team to bring this event to the high school and the community. An event presentation for parents and community members will be at 7 p.m. The third cohort of HTM students were welcomed into the program this past Tuesday by Dr. McIntyre and Mrs. Banach. The graduating cohort one students shared their experiences in the program and told the new student, students that being a part of the program was life changing for them and provided academic and career skills that have prepared them for college and vocations. Um, the senior citizen prom is this Friday in the cafeteria. This event is sponsored by the National Honor Society and is well attended by senior citizens and the community. Um, tickets are $5 and are available at the door or at the senior center. Um, also, advanced placement um, testing is coming up soon. Students in grades 12, um, 9 through 12 will be taking AP exams in 18 different subjects between May 2nd and 13th. Um, students in the Humanities Scholars Program visiting um, Worcester State University yesterday. Oh, visited. They toured the campus and met with students and faculty to learn more about what WSU has to offer. Um, also this year, Junior Prom was held at Union Station in Worcester. Um, it was a great event. Uh, students and faculty came together and the venue was beautiful. The DJ and the candy station were a huge hit with everyone. <laughs> um, also next Tuesday is the annual MHS Pops concert at the Town Hall at 7 p.m. We hope everyone can attend. And that's all. Thank you. I apologize. In your name? Oh, my name's Fiona Raleigh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry? Fiona Raleigh. Oh, okay. Any member have any questions? Any comments? Thank you. Thank you for coming and giving us an update. Very thorough. Lots of uh, lots yes. of things going on, especially when it's yes. we had a week off in between. Yes, yeah. so, very busy. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. been very busy, so thank you so much. Um, what's, what year are you? I'm a junior. You're so junior. Okay. You're starting to look at colleges? Oh gosh, everyone asks me that. I'll bet. <laughs> 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 not really yet, no. Okay. Starting that process. It'll be a busy summer for you. Yes, it is. Well, thank you so much for the update. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you very, very much. Those of you in the audience that want to, you can leave. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's a great show, but. <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. Congratulations. Well, thank you. Thank Congratulations. You. Thank you.
Okay, next agenda item is the school improvement plan and family handbooks. And the first one up is Memorial Elementary. Rachel, Lisa, and Adelaide show. Good evening, ladies. Good evening. How's everybody? Very good. How are you? Good. Good. So I will introduce. Everybody knows Rachel Driscoll, the assistant to the principal at Memorial, and Adelaide Donahue is a parent at Memorial, participant on the school council at Memorial as well as past Memorial PTO president, and um, her, her last child is coming, is having, um, finishing his second grade year at Memorial this year. So Very thank nice. you for coming. What would you like me to do first? Well, the wait's laid here is the improvement plan is first in our. Okay. 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 <coughs> so the school improvement plan, I did change, I did, I did change the format this year, and that's why um, I didn't necessarily redline anything as changes because the whole document looks different than it looked looked last year, and it's more it looks more like the strategic plan, the Milford Public Schools strategic plan. So that's how um, I laid it out this year. But some big highlights for next year and goals that we'll be working on at Memorial are the working on continuing to work on curriculum mapping and curriculum unit development. We're also beginning to implement the Portland Public Schools writing program. This is all under 1.2 curriculum initiatives, as well as hopefully begin to pilot some of the model curriculum units that the Massachusetts Department of <coughs> Elementary and Secondary Education have put forth. Additionally, under curriculum initiatives, we would like to work on strengthening, strengthening our tier one instruction. And this current school year, we're working, um, Meg Belsito brought in um, a group, uh, two women who worked with us on our co-teaching in special education. And they really worked, you know, almost on our tier two and tier three, obviously. But now we're finding that we want to strengthen our tier one as well. So that will be also be something that we're working on. Foundations, we are beginning, that's a curriculum program that we're bringing in at the kindergarten level and also piloting at grade one and grade two. And we'll be having training at the beginning of June on those, on, on foundations. <coughs> as well as beginning to implement the Massachusetts kindergarten, preschool and kindergarten social emotional standards that, that just came out as well. Under 2.2 program expansion, I already spoke a little bit about the special ed expansion as far as continuing the work with the special ed department and the women that are working with us now on our co-teaching, but then also bringing it to help um, support all teachers on tier one instruction and differentiating and working on helping improve our tier one um, interventions. Our ELL program is expanding next year, as you know from the budget discussions. <laughs> so we will be gain, gaining two more uh, uh, ELL teachers at Memorial School. And we're really, the, really targeting um, one in particular to work on the newcomers program um, at Memorial, and the second one to work with our ELL student um, SWD students, students with disabilities. So um, I think that will be a huge asset to Memorial and just within the last few weeks, the num um, we've had several newcomers come in and, and begin at Memorial School and, and to program at this point is certainly a challenge and we're, we're, we're rising to that challenge, but it, it can be challenging to, to have the new students begin, you know, Almost, almost weekly, it feels like. Um, so I'm really excited to have those two new positions next year. Under Community Engagement 3.1, we, um, two teachers at Memorial started this great initiative. Um, it's called From Our Closet to Yours, where they were, they had noted that um, some students maybe didn't have a, 
the proper clothing, enough clothing, you know, <coughs> to be able to change daily. So the, the these two teachers brought this program into Memorial mm -hmm. where they began collecting clothes from, actually it just started with staff only. We began, um, people began bringing in clothes for children, adults, and um, I'd say they, they they have way too many bins of clothes. Yes, we have 30 do. plus bins of clothes <laughs> and about, you know, I think they've had three evenings where they invite families in and they can shop, you know, shop for free at, at the school and be able to get shoes and um, clothing. They've also been, there's been other donations of, you know, unused undergarments and socks and things like that. So they also will be able to get that at at the store so they just had an, an, an evening last night which was you know looked really successful more and more families had come than in the past and um, it's just totally something the teachers did on their own that is something to be really proud of and um, we're excited about that Lisa, just a quick question. I'm yes. sorry to interrupt you. Mm -hmm. Just uh, on that one in particular, is that something that you and Lisa, the other Lisa, mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I'm pointing to in the back of the yep. room, Lisa Firth, is that something where the schools have worked together on that as well, just you thinking about cross grades? You know what? We have started to. Good. So um, I know that one of the teachers from um, from Brookside has, has actually participated, <laughs> come over on, on two of the occasions to, I think the first time to observe how it, how it went and the second time. Um, to actually help out and I believe that families from Brookside were also invited mm -hmm. over Perfect. to the store so Great. and, and it, it may be also in, in Brookside's improvement plan something similar to, to work together on and Memorial's a great location for for that because you know it's kind of centrally located mm -hmm. if, if for families to get to so um, it's a storage nightmare but it's <laughs> it's a great program for for families and right now it's completely just the staff at Memorial the staff at probably both schools that are donating clothes in, and we haven't even opened it up to have you know our families start to donate clothes yet and we, we have plenty for right That's now. Great. So. But under also under community engagement our junior achievement we we've been working with EMC for um, the past couple of years where they'll come in and do um, basically social studies units with with our students and um, so they'll send out you know, 20 to 30 volunteers that come in right into the classrooms and, and spend the day and um, work with the students. And, it, and it's really a great program, too. Once we have a date finalized, I'd love to invite you all to come because they're all young, <laughs> young um, EMC employees, and they, they have a good time at the school with the kids. So that's another great program that came from a teacher at Memorial as well. Mm. 3.2 parent engagement. Uh, new this into this school improvement plan as you know um, Milford is or the, our district is a title one title one district now so part of that means that we have to have family engagement nights title one family engagement nights so that is incorporated into the school improvement plan 4.1 um, will be incorporating professional learning communities at the at Memorial really kind of reinvigorating I guess um, professional learning communities at Memorial 4.2 you'll see our professional development very bare outline of, of some goals for next year and then 4.3 which says 4.2 on your on your copy and I apologize um, our safety continuing to work with the climate culture and morale committee on, on building improvements and then also obviously you all know our playground improvements which we're um, really excited about tomorrow um, so Friday and Saturday we begin our community build on the front playground at Memorial School completely funds raised by the Memorial PTO over the past four years and probably when Adelaide was president <laughs> so finally we're really excited that that the time has come and we're we by Monday I keep saying by Monday morning we'll have a brand new pro, uh, playground so okay. we're really excited about that and you know already starting to come up with some plans for our back playground as well which will be a much much bigger project but for now we're really happy about the, the front playground great I think that's it any member
Any discussion? Joe? I just wanted to touch on the, the playground thing. I mean, that, that, that's a great example of how important the PTOs are to the, the district. Not only are you building a sense of community within the schools and providing support to, to all the teachers, but um, you're helping to fill that funding gap that we have sometimes across the, the district. And I know you know, you've been waiting for this playground for years and the PTOs just kept chipping away with fundraising and finally at the point where you're able to, to um, replace the playground in the front of the schools and then to your point, we get that next project in the back that hopefully we can get done soon as well. So uh, again, just wanted to highlight the, how important these PTOs are to the district and all the great work that they do. Yeah. Any other member? Jen? <clears throat> and I just want to say thank you for um, what you're kind of putting together in terms of your response to intervention model and specifically looking at tier one. I think we always hear so much about how we support kids that really have challenges, um, but sometimes we really have to go back and look at that core curriculum and what are we offering to all students to make sure everyone can be successful with that general curriculum that everyone should be able to access. So thank you for the time, for the curriculum mapping, for really um, digging deep into that hard work um, and making sure that everyone has access to a really strong general curriculum. So, and I also really like the format. You mentioned it was new. And I think school improvement plans can be so cumbersome and they can look so overwhelming. Um, I think it's clear and we know what your goals are and they're very easy to follow. So I think that'd be great for your school to, and your parent community to work with. Great job. Scott? Um, you know, just thank you guys. Very clearly you've got great engagement from your staff. Um, obviously great volunteers from a PTO perspective as well <coughs> I I'm gonna go back to what we were talking about earlier just with the I'm, I'm so impressed with the with the with the clothing piece that you're doing in the and I just it's been something that's been going on in Milford Public Schools even back to when I was a student I remember in middle school um, the assistant principal at, at what that at that point was middle school West is now now Stacy um, I remember watching her seeing kids that would go around during the hallways um, during the winter time that wouldn't have coats and the next day she'd have a coat for them. Um, and it was, it's sort of that grassroots effort that it's great to see that you've got such great buy-in and such great engagement from your team um, and from your staff that this is something that they've taken on themselves and really, it, it's made it all the way into the school improvement plan. I think that's, I think that's awesome. So congratulations to, to both of you guys on, a, on another successful year. Can't wait to see what next year brings for you. and. Look forward to seeing that. It's good to see you, Adelaide. It's good, and uh, uh, best of be best wishes to you guys for the for the coming school year. Okay, can I have a motion to accept with pleasure the Memorial Elementary School Improvement Plan, second by Joe. All in favor? Unanimous. Okay. So I feel like before I move on, I would be remiss if I didn't thank um, Dr. Corey Masterson for being here, who has also been. Um, very supportive, as you know, in her role in her pursuit of her her um, licensures, her leadership licensures. She's also spent some time with with Rachel and I, in, in also developing the school improvement plan. So I feel like I have to say that um, that I appreciate her work and certainly her work and guidance on the curriculum development and and those things that we're really trying to get off the ground. So thank you for being here. I don't know if it's for us or because you're always here now, but <laughs> thank you, thank you for coming. <laughs> thank you. It's for you guys. Usually we charge her rent. So. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa, real quick before you start, are the Memorial and the Brookside handbooks together? Because that's how they're laid out in that. They are, yes, yes, and we, all, we only right. have the same. I was going to say, do you mind? Yep. Not at all. You sure? Okay. Yes. All right. Thank you. <coughs> Seth can take the third seat now. Thank you. I just wanted all the players. That makes sense. Thank Definitely. You. So our, our handbooks are, are virtual, uh, they are the exact same, right? Mm -hmm. So they're, our only big change this year was, um, came from Judy Dagnes in the nursing department. It's on page 22 of the memorial handbook. And um, Lisa can tell you what page it is on hers, but it has to do with the physical exams <coughs> and just that kind of change in language for physical exams for entrance and st coming into the middle for public 25. schools. So 22 for me, 25 for 25. Lisa. And then other than that, just the name updates and, and those kind of things. Okay. Any discussion? Can I have a motion to accept the memorial and the Brookside Elementary School handbooks? Joe? Second by John. All in favor? 
Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, and thank, thank you, you for a great job. You always do. Thank Thanks. you. Have a good night. <laughs> Okay. Good evening. Hi. How's everybody? Good. 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 Okay. The um, school improvement plan, um, Brookside as well, changed the format to get from that detailed involved grid to um, mirroring the district strategic plan. Some of the changes that have taken place. Um, we changed it from a two-year and three-year plan that has been in the past to a one-year plan. It makes more sense to focus on the school year that's about to come up, even though within those plans there are long-term plans, um, which will be ben mentioned in the next year plan. But some of the changes that have taken place under Standard 1 in curriculum planning and assessment uh, and instructional technology, we were fortunate to have our PTO dedicate a fundraiser comedy night the funds that came from that towards instructional technology the comedy night was such a great success it raised ten thousand um, dollars we didn't expect that I loved it but we didn't expect that um, with that ten thousand dollars we were able to um, we, we filled out a survey to staff uh, uh, what their needs or higher higher low priorities were what already existed in the classrooms and we were able to uh, purchase three short throw Epson projectors into three classrooms, um, install and connect three smart board projectors and uh, smart boards and projectors that have existed in the school since the 2007 renovation but have never been permanently installed. Um, and when they were used as portable units, any time it got bumped, it would have to be recalibrated, which was a waste of time and instructional learning, so teachers didn't want to use them anymore. So we were able, with the help of two parent volunteers, myself and Steve Rice, we were able to install the smart boards permanently on the walls and um, so to get um, braces and, and what's called um, mounting brackets for the smart board projectors. They are now affixed to the walls and the ceilings and they are at great use. Um, also with the additional support from Jen Lancaster's ELL budget, we were able to purchase 30 Kindle Fires, which um, each ELL classroom and self-contained classroom got uh, five uh, Kindle Fires to work as a technology tool for our ELL program. It's a great visual um, instructional material to use for our ELL learners. The teachers are thrilled. Um, the Kindle Fires itself are a cost of $100 and is more technology savvy for our little ones, five, six, and seven year olds, rather than the Chromebook group, which are very expensive um, pieces. And uh, these uh, come with a warranty and a case, which protect them, because these little kids drop them a lot. So cost effective, we got 30, um, 30 of them instead of, I think we could have gotten six with the fund, six uh, Chromebooks with the fund. So that was fabulous. And the, the large fundraising event each fall, whether it's a comedy night or foods from all over the world, uh, will be dedicated to instructional technology. So we look forward to that piece um, every year. Under uh, curriculum initiatives, we had uh, created, we were able to have two ELL self-contained classrooms in kindergarten. We went from one to two. We also added a first grade self-contained ELL classroom. Um, we were able to bring back the science convention, which was a huge success, with 115 entrants um, just for first and second graders, and the final count were 65 experiments. And when I tell you, um, I was most impressed with the, um, the subject of the experiments. They weren't, it wasn't sulfur, boiled eggs, and vinegar that you smelt as you typically do. This was really, uh, classy, uh, common core standard connected <coughs> science projects. What we were able to do um, with that youth, convention, youth scientist convention with the help of Debbie Seaver and Peg Zakili and Angela Petruska, we were able to hold evening workshops for the free and reduced lunch families and provide materials for their 
um, experiments and trifolds and um, resources with the Honor Society students that volunteered. So we had little mini science um, convention workshops and those um, less fortunate families were able to participate um, with the help of the uh, Honor Society, which was a fabulous um, program. Under um, uh, curriculum initiatives, we will continue mirroring like Memorial School, the curriculum mapping, the Portland Public Schools writing program, um, the foundations for all of K and for two first and second grade pilot classrooms, and the social emotional uh, standards in kindergarten. Under uh, assessment, we have, every school has different names for their grade level team meetings where teams have, are, are made into, uh, teams, teachers are made into teams to um, meet weekly to collaborate over students who are struggling or um, to review assessments with, to drive instruction. Um, we will now call them teaching collaborative teams, TCTs, like they'll be called at Memorial, and they'll be called, they're called at Woodland. Uh, standard two, teaching all students. We are going to focus on program expansion, expansion of the self-contained DLL classrooms, and our uh, special education co-teaching inclusion classrooms that we were fortunate to pilot this year. We will be in year two of those classrooms, and we'll, we have approximately five of those classrooms, two in kindergarten, two in first grade, and one in second grade. The um, intervention specialists and tutors, we are fortunate to have a math intervention teacher, like our reading intervention teachers, providing um, extra support for our struggling learners in math, as well as um, what our present reading intervention program does. At standard three, family and community engagement, uh, parent engagement and partnerships. We have our PTO events. Um, I got to give a shout out to our PTO board, which have been phenomenal in not only raising money, but getting the community to participate in the activities for, um, and coming up with new ideas, such as the carnival in the fall, the comedy night for um, adults only. Um, we had movie night, uh, bing, bing, beach bingo in January. Um, a fantastic Brookside's Got Talent show uh, in, the, in March, which was nothing short but Americans Got Idol, uh, America's Got Talent or American Idol. It was, it's, was outstanding. Um, and the staff did a great job too with their dance number. Um, we are looking to pilot some curriculum team leader evenings and curriculum workshops for families next year to um, help parents understand uh, the curriculum that their children are learning at, in school. And along with that, have a specialist night to showcase music, <coughs> phys ed, art, and guidance. Uh, under 3.2, culturally proficient communication, our, my principal newsletters have been uh, translated in Spanish and Portuguese, as well as English, um, placed <coughs> on the website and um, distributed. And, um, Exploration of a thrift shore like they have at Memorial School. Uh, we have inquired about that as well as a community food pantry. Uh, we also have initiated a, a snacks for free and reduced lunch. Free and reduced lunch kids get breakfast and lunch, but they don't get that snack in the morning. So um, in order to abide by the food policy, we I pass the hat around to staff and every two months we get donations of $75 which pay for buys 300 snacks from Kyla Tuttle's food services, and we're able to use those snacks because they fall within the realms of the, uh, the food policy. Um, in exploration of the, the thrift store, we're going to have something called Family Bridges, which is something we are going to explore. We find that um, our less fortunate families and our ELL families have a difficult time with transportation to get to school events in the evening, so we're going to come up, create a program to come to them and inform them about school events, the handbook um, with, with volunteers to translate this information to families. We find that the things that we assume families understand are, for example, if their child has to take medicine to help them support their learning throughout the day or access the curriculum, they don't necessarily understand the um, implications happen that happens if they just don't give their the medicine to them in the morning. 
the child turns out to have n a not so successful day. So we want to really convey the information to parents about the policies and the handbook, anywhere from um, the, the, the um, health policies to the uh, legal policies to the just the basic rules of the school that they may not get in this large document of a handbook. Um, Framingham had piloted a program, ha has a program like that called Opening Doors. Um, and we don't necessarily want to go into the homes of these families, but maybe meet in a common place where families could come to us that may not have transportation, such as uh, the public library or um, maybe the, uh, I don't know if the youth, cent youth center, we could uh, have a meeting place like that, or even some of the churches downtown in the basements of the churches so that um, the families can get this information that they normally wouldn't um, access. And uh, with some of our, we find also, too, that some of our kids are hungry at the weekends and they don't have the knowledge of the resources in the town. And having a simple food pantry of canned goods and non-perishables um, available to hand out um, to children at the weekends, if many kids come in and say, you know, uh, we don't have, I didn't have any breakfast this morning, we don't have any food at the weekend, we would follow through with phone calls to the parents and see if they could use some assistance um, with some canned goods for the weekend and provide information with the resources that are um, in Milford alone. And uh, under the professional culture, culture much like Memorial School, we are, um, we'll be exp uh, implementing professional learning communities and um, naming our uh, grade level teams TCTs, um, aligning a, a numerous amount of professional development um, for the upcoming school year with the new initiatives that are coming. Very good. It's a lot, <laughs> but it's, it's very exciting. Any member? Scott? Uh, you have an aggressive year ahead of you. Yes, yes we do. <laughs> You're going to be busy. <laughs> very busy. Uh, congratulations on your fundraiser. I did hear about the comedy night, and that's, uh, from a PTO perspective, wow. Yeah. That is that is very impressive. Um, and I'm very pleased to hear that, that, te that technology was forefront. Um, yeah. In, your, in your mind, and, and that that's where that money was ultimately invested in. It's it's certainly been uh, a very hot topic um, around this table yeah. um, over the last two years now, um, and even going back further than that. So thank you for for your efforts from a PTO perspective, and and for you know continuing to keep that that focus in mind. So uh, congratulations, and, and good luck to you for a future next for a future in the for next year. Yeah, thank you. Any other member, Jen? Um, I just wanted to commend Brookside for all of the, the community engagement, parent engagement. Um, that school's always been very welcoming in terms of bringing families in, bringing students in, and especially when you're just starting out, families may not know a lot of other families, children are just learning their way, and um, to see that you even expanded that, adding your science convention back, but, and so even you know, having that academic piece with some of it, that's, it, 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 it just really go. it reminds you of what a community um, center our schools are. So thank you for continuing a lot of those programs that have been, been ongoing and really successful. Thank you. Thank you both. Do you guys know Seth Wood? <laughs> I mean, I mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I should have introduced you at the beginning. <laughs> yeah, if I could just say, and I want to speak broadly on both, um, actually all three elementary schools. I think the, the job that um, the three elementary school principals and the faculties have done in the last couple of years to really align curriculum and initiatives. So what's happening at Brookside is the same thing, or, or, or very similar to what's happening in Memorial, and that's feeding <coughs> into um, Woodland, and it's, it's starting to become a more and more seamless process, and I'm seeing it every year. And I wanna, the principals meet, is it bi-weekly? Weekly. Weekly, no, mm -hmm. weekly. And they're, they're, they're talking about, they have a whole series, because some standing items, and then a whole series of um, initiatives that they're talking about and they're really aligning what's happening at that level. And I think you're gonna see um, a lot more consistency in programming, in curriculum, and, um, and, we're gonna, uh, and I think it's gonna improve results because I think we're all talking the same language now as well. So I really wanna commend Lisa Firth, Seth, Lisa Burns, Rachel Driscoll, and uh, that character in the back, Craig and Sigley, <laughs> 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 on, on the work that they've done. It's, it's been fantastic and I'm really seeing uh, the efforts are really starting to really pay off and you're really kind of seeing it. So congratulations. Thank you. Any other member? Jim? Yeah, I just wanted to t 
touch upon the compassion from the faculty, the um, pass the hat thing is amazing. Um, even in an environment where, you know, there's not enough funds to perhaps facilitate something like that, the fact that you reach into your own pocket is heartwarming and encouraging and speaks volumes about the district. It, so. it, I, I, if I can mention, um, it was truly amazing to have um, our ELL teachers advocate for our families all the time. And when this one teacher came and informed us that the particular family was literally sleeping on the floor, um, I sent a, an email out to staff um, with some you know, asking for help. How can we help these families? In a matter of three hours, I got over $400 in cash um, and bags and bags th th over the next day, bags of clothing. Um, so we outfitted this, the, the, a couple of families. We were able to have three families actually benefit. We had mattresses, bedding, pillows. I was in Walmart with the cart pushing it like this. <laughs> I just took the cash, went to Walmart, and just got everything that I could possibly think of, kitchen utensils, pots and pan, um, mixing bowls and dishes and cups and plates that, um, that they don't have, they didn't have. And um, it, was, it was unbelievable. I was just completely touched and blown away at the generosity that the staff continue to just give out of their pockets. It just it transcends just, just education. It's Absolutely. it's more humanity, and it's yeah. you know you should be recognized for that. And thank you. Well, thank the to the Brookside staff to, to all do of you. That, yeah, and Memorial. Yes. Any other member? Okay, very nice, nice job. And thank I agree you. with Scott. You're busy. Can I have a motion to accept the Brookside Improvement Handbook, Scott? With pleasure. Second from Jen. All in favor? And then Thank you very much for all the good things all of you do in our district. Thanks so much. Have Thank a you. good night. Have Thank you. Night. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. <clears throat> okay, the next agenda item is the school choice public hearing and participation vote. And uh, what this is, every year, as you know, the school committee has to decide whether we're going to participate in school choice in the coming year or whether we're not. And so with that, I'll open it up for discussion. Scott? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that we, as we have in all in uh, years past, that we continue to participate in school choice. Okay. Before I accept that motion, may I, is there any discussion? That's Thank you very much, Scott, for the first motion. My pleasure. Second motion I have from Jin. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Okay. And the next agenda item is the Milford School Committee Superintendent Operating Protocols for 2016-2017. This is a document that we pass around that we all sign. Mm -hmm. Has everybody had an opportunity to read it online before? We do not have to take a vote on this. We just merely sign this. So, okay. I'll sign it and start passing it around. <coughs> um, actually, Scott. I'm going to let you sign it first because you're the next one on the agenda. Ah, got it. Thank you. I'll tell you what. I'm going to set that off to the side and let me start. Let me start. Let me go to the next piece and then I'll go from there. Um, <clears throat> middle school reuse is going to be a very quick update. We have not yet met our okay. next meeting. Uh, we did receive. Uh, we're actually waiting for the final. Uh, we now have the final draft um, from the consultant that we've hired. That will be uh, presented to us by the consultant by the Cecil Group. Uh, next Wednesday. Um, it is an open meeting, so certainly in, it is open to the public. When is this going? I'm sorry. Uh, it is next Wednesday. At what time? Uh, I believe it's at 7 o'clock. But it'll be a posted meeting. I'll, I'll, that'll, that's available on the website, on the town website. Um, but that will be, uh, and that's when the presentation will be given to us. We'll have the full report. Um, I actually should have my hard copies actually being mailed to us because we're all having technology issues. Whatever format they're using won't open up on on some of the digital devices that many of us have. So um, we'll have our hard copy, and we'll, we should have that to us by the weekend. So if anybody's wondering what I'm doing this weekend, I will be reading, <laughs> I will be reading that cover to cover. Um, so I'll have a much more in-depth update um, at that meeting. Um, and then I know that John and I, with uh, the Middle School Reuse Committee subcommittee piece, John and I actually had an opportunity to speak. We're going to be working with Kevin and communicating with Kerry as well. Um, to try and hopefully set up a meeting uh, before the next school committee meeting. Okay. Any discussion, questions? 
the question that I have for you, Scott, do you mm -hmm. want us to take this and, and put this down with the middle school east? Uh, it's, uh, it doesn't, it does not matter to me. It's at the pleasure of the chairman. Okay. Because I, I stitched, when I saw it again today and I reached out to Melissa, uh, we were under the understanding that you wanted to keep it separate for a reason. So if you do, no, okay. No, doesn't matter we'll, to me. Okay. So we'll just merge this down below. Perfect. Okay. Okay. You're all set. Mm -hmm. Good. Thank you very much. Next agenda item is a report of the Assistant Superintendent for Business and Human Resources. Um, yes, the committee has um, six warrants for the approval this evening. The first warrant is in the amount of $34,143.24. A motion from John, second from Joe. All in favor? The second warrant is in the amount of $252,023.89. Motion from Jim, second from Joe. All in favor? The third warrant is in the amount of $87,509.86. Motion from Scott, second from Joe. All in favor? The fourth warrant is in the amount of $18,086.73. Motion from Jim, second from John. All in favor? The fifth warrant is in the amount of $18,453.85. Motion from Scott, second from Joe. All in favor? And the last warrant is in the amount of $428,095.28. Motion by Joe, second by Jen. All in favor? And the next agenda item is the FY16 uh, budget update. I will bring on to the May meeting uh, a list of budget transfers for a few areas to balance our budget, one being the legal um, deficit that we have um, that we spoke about in a previous meeting. Uh, we will need additional money um, into our substitute line item forecasting that uh, we will not finish the year uh, without doing that. And that will essentially come from, as you can see, there are a surplus under the teaching um, professional salary line. And that's simply teachers that have uh, either taken a maternity leave or a sick uh, leave, and we have a substitute um, in their place. So therefore, we will transfer those funds to balance, balance that deficit. And the last area that um, I reviewed um, in this financial statement is our athletics um, under the local budget. We do have a deficit, and I do believe it is from maybe uh, two to three years of certain programs that have not um, balanced within the revolving fund for the fees. <coughs> so we will be coming back with looking for an answer on how to... Um, balance that issue in, in the next coming months. Uh, we will be able to balance that deficit, though, in our 2016 local budget. But it, it is something that um, does exist, and we're going to have to continue to address that. Um, that's all that I have under the FY16 budget update. I do have a list of the latest hires from our previous meeting. No vote is required. It's simply for your information only. And we do have a grade seven um, field trip request to the Roger Williams Zoo on June 17th. And this is a request uh, for a $20 at home fee. And we have approximately 110 students traveling uh, with 11 uh, chaperones. It is out of state, it is Rhode Island, therefore it does require school committee vote. Okay. Can, Can I, I just, if I'm, I apologize, Mr. Chairman. Didn't we just approve one going to Roger Williams or was that to a different one? Uh, that was uh, kindergarten uh, Brookside okay. School. Okay, just different, I, I didn't think I was going crazy. <laughs> it's possible, but. <laughs> and and there could be another one. I do see where Mrs. Dagnese has signed off on it. Yes. So we have nursing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. All right, good. Can I have a motion, please? Joe, second from Scott. All in favor? They're on their trip. And that's all I have, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Next agenda item is the subcommittee updates. The first one on the list is policy. You want me to take it or you want to take it? I can take it. That's fine. <laughs> um, uh -oh. 
handing over the reins. <laughs> so we actually have a lot of things going on with the policy subcommittee. Our next meeting is Monday night, um, May 2nd. But just to kind of give the committee an update in terms of where we are and the things that we're looking at, um, we have a couple of ongoing policies that we're reviewing. Um, that includes the um, religious observance policy or the potential for including a religious observance policy. Homework, which has been an ongoing topic of conversation all year. Um, we have some new things that we'll be looking at in terms of accept the ex reviewing the acceptable use policy and digital citizenship expectations. So it's a new area that we'll be talking about. Um, medical awareness, Mrs. Dagnes has asked us to take a look at that policy, um, I think mainly in regards to the, some of the shifts <coughs> of eighth grade moving back to Stacy and making sure that all the policies accurately reflect where our students are housed. Um, in terms of what, what medical needs um, they have at the particular school and grade levels. We will be looking at international field trips, not in terms of whether or not we should have them, but in terms of student um, workloads when they're away, what are they missing, and how do we um, ensure that they have a seamless transition back to school, both from the teacher perspective and from the student's perspective when they return. The Woodland School will be, um, it was just voted on at the Woodland um, Building Committee meeting last week. Um, the addition of a turf field will be part of the new Woodland. And so we'll need to look at our policy in terms of using the turf field and how that will apply to the Woodland site. And we'll need to make sure that we're in compliance with zoning bylaws and make sure that we continue <coughs> to be good neighbors for the people surrounding Woodland School. So there's, there's a lot. I'm not, a lot. It's going to take more than one meeting. <laughs> yeah. Or one, more than one year. <laughs> awesome. I think that's it, yeah. Okay. Wellness, we have not met. <coughs> Middle School East. Uh, John and I had an opportunity to talk just briefly before the meeting. We're working to schedule our first meeting. We're going to work with Kevin to coordinate with Carrie and some building administrators. We're hoping to be able to meet before the next school committee meeting. Uh, and it'll actually time out well because I will have I do, that's next Thursday, so I will have just received the final report on Wednesday evening. Hopefully we'll be able to have an opportunity to meet next Thursday before the school committee meeting. We'll be prepared to present and, and have a, a more robust conversation. Did I miss anything, John? Nope, you got it all, Scott. All right. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Woodland School Building Committee? Um, so, again, I attended the first meeting. Lights. That's what we um, approved last month. Yes. Yes, we did for that. <laughs> I thought you were talking about for the building. Yeah, we should <laughs> definitely approve <laughs> lights. For yeah, the building. I, was like, oh, I thought he said the light was out. <laughs> uh, well, actually, that connects to the reason why we need to look at um, some of the policy for the use because there will be some evening use of that mm -hmm. field. Yeah. Um, th they reported that I think 70% of the project budget has been spent at this point. Um, third floor, it sounds like, is in pretty good shape in terms of completion. Um, elevators were installed, your kitchen equipment is there, and um, the next step, it sounds like we'll be, be starting to look at phase two, which is the um, demolition of the current woodland. Um, they reported the budget is still on schedule and a late July date for substantial completion. So I don't know if you wanted to add anything to that, Craig, since you're living it every day. Whiteboards are up, um, tack boards are up. So if you, if you walk into a classroom, all the, the storage is there. It looks like a school. Starting to look that way. So, and they're starting to put in the, the playgrounds. So it's getting exciting. All set. Okay, technology task force. Um, we have not had a meeting yet. Okay. Climate, culture, and morale. Yeah, so our, our, our next full committee meeting is, is June 9th, um, and as you heard from the school improvement plans, it continues to be a focus for the, the district, so. Okay. Budget subcommittee meeting? Budget subcommittee, we had our, our first meeting with Kathy uh, prior to the, the FinCom meetings, uh, just to review the and, and uh, prepare for that presentation. Um, and we'll be reaching back out now to the, the FinCom to schedule some regular meetings with them going forward. Okay. 
and if I may jump on to that only because I was at the Finance Committee meeting on Monday night um, and uh, Bob DeVita and Mark Shane both did a really nice job saying um, how well our meeting went on Monday but how impressed they were that the school committee has come forward and really pushed to say that we need to meet more throughout the year working on the school budget and that the school committee has agreed to make sure that that happens and Bob DeVita made a point to say that come right out and say that which is you know in my years of being here that hasn't always been the case so I think with us reaching out to them and saying that we're going to meet at least I would like to see once a month budget subcommittee you know meet I think that's really going to send the right message because another thing that came up in the discussion was they feel that we need to improve our our communication with them and them as well with us and I think the only way we're going to be able to do that is is through, through this subcommittee which we set up so okay marketing and communication marketing communication we're, we're working with <laughs> with the administration and schedule some time so hopefully we'll uh, we'll have our first meeting shortly okay next agenda item school liaison updates did anybody have an opportunity to get into a school okay. no problem and next agenda item is future agenda items is any Scott um, just as I mentioned uh, earlier in the meeting obviously with uh, with the news that um, Meg Delcito will be moving on to Shrewsbury yep. as their director of special ed that leaves us with an op with an opening mm -hmm. um, so just want to I would I would ask that we add to our uh, either our next or very immediately thereafter budget uh, I'm sorry uh, agenda a yeah. conversation <coughs> to um, put together whether it's a subcommittee whether it's a small subcommittee subset of this group um, but a conversation around what our what our search process is going to look like um, you know any internal candidates I would assume very similar to what we went through <coughs> when we went through the appointing process with Dr. McIntyre um, you know sort of starting to formulate that as it's um, for those I know we've got some new members that have not got, not been through this before special ed director is within the purview and the appointment directly of the school committee just as the same as this as the superintendent of schools is so um, it's it's part of our responsibilities it's the only two actual I, th I think it's the only two appointments that we actually get there actually are only two direct employees um, as a school committee um, everyone else is is direct reports of the superintendent of schools so um, I would like to see that as a future agenda item Sure. Dr. Yeah, so if, if you don't mind, I'd like to just give a couple of minutes. Sure, absolutely, um, absolutely. We'd like to do um, an internal posting for the position. Um, and I'm, I'm thinking process-wise to do a subcommittee of the school committee, maybe two or three members, and myself, perhaps Kathy and uh, Craig as well, to um, vet the internal candidates. And I'll, I'll end that process in a little more detail in next week's meeting. Okay. And then I, I anticipate May 17th to have a finalist or two to um, for the whole committee to kind of review and kind of go through a process with if that if that makes sense yeah and, I'll, and again I'll, I'll, I'll outline the program in more detail at the May 5th meeting with the goal of having the, the kind of the final interview May 17th okay all right and that's what you're looking for is that mm -hmm. okay yep good good any other future agenda items okay any old business and with that, can I have a motion for adjournment? Joe? Second. And we do have an executive session this evening, Mr. Chairman? Second from Scott. We do not. We're gonna, they, not. What we're going to do is we're going to put it on, Scott, every agenda now. Got it. That way, in, something, in case something comes up, we decide at least it's on there for us. So okay. Got it. I just and I apologize. I'll let everybody okay. know when you come in whether we have it or not. <laughs> and again, I'm sorry, motion from Joe. Yep. Second from Scott. All in favor? Good night. And thank you very much.